you're watching a special episode of Gamer TV. We're peeking into the future to see what's coming our way in 2005. It's pedal to the metal time as we burn nitro induced. We get to meet a new friend from a familiar world. And we pick out the big games coming your way in the next 12 months. But before all that, we wipe away Lucifer's tears in Devil May Cry 3. It's a return to the PS2 for Devil May Cry and its ice cool hero seen here fending off demons while munching nonchalantly on a slice of pizza. Half demon, half human Dante faces off against his brother Virgil in the third instalment of Capcom's stylish action adventure series. Although this is B-roll footage, we did have a chance to play a couple of levels of the game at this year's E3 and Tokyo Game Shows. And thankfully, the early signs are it's a return to form from Dante. As you'd expect with a Devil May Cry title, ferocious sword and gunplay is still its raison d'etre. But after the disappointment of Devil May Cry 2, Capcom has rebuilt the game engine from scratch, offering greater control over Dante's acrobatics. We caught up with the game's producer, Tsuyoshi Tanaka, to talk about the introduction of a new RPG-style fighting system. We created a new fighting system where you can choose your favourite fighting style. For example, if you like to fight at close quarters, you use the sword or your hands more. If you like to fight at long distances, use the guns. If you're not that good at fighting, you can use both guns and sword. And of course, use some of Dante's more exotic moves to avoid the enemy. Graphically, the game already looks like a huge improvement over its predecessors, with impressive numbers of bad guys on screen all lining up patiently to receive their punishment. New moves such as the Million Stab and the Aerial Rave are set to be included. The prospect of clearing a screen with a hail of bullets or a whirlwind of flashing steel has us all excited already. Devil May Cry 3 should be with us in March, and you can be sure we'll have a full review then. After a stellar year of top titles like Halo 2 and GTA San Andreas in 2004, what can gamers expect in 2005? Join us now as we dust off our crystal ball and predict the biggest games and developments for the coming year. With the final Star Wars movie prequel waiting in the wings, LucasArts have been busy adding the final touches to a Star Wars themed first person shooter, Republic Commando. All the action staples are present and correct. Elite Special Forces unit, check. A wide variety of exotic weapons and equipment, check. But in how many shooters do you get the chance to blow the fur off an eight-foot-tall Wookiee? Republic Commando also throws squad-based command into the mix with three clone troopers following your orders no matter how suicidal. An updated version of the Unreal game engine is at the core of the game, and one-touch squad control should help to provide faster three-man combat. Fantastic! We got all the way through a Star Wars game preview without claiming the forces with this title. Republic Commando battles the dark side on Xbox and PC in March. With so many games involving heavy ordnance hitting consoles in 2004, you'd be forgiven for thinking the beat-em-up has had its day. That is until Tekken 5 makes its comeback on the PS2. Since Tekken debuted in 1995, martial arts fans have been roundhouse kicking, body slamming and pummeling their opponents into the ground. The fifth entry in the series doesn't vary from that formula a great deal. But Namco has shoehorned an entirely new game and graphics engine into Tekken 5. This allows for a greater variety of fluid combos and killer moves. Fans of the previous title complained the action was too slow and the new engine should address that problem, meaning Beat and Fist should become a blur in combat. 
Favourite characters from previous Tekken titles like Nina Williams and Kazuya will make their return. But look out for new characters such as Fen Wai and Raven who looks like he's nicked Wesley Snipes Blade Wardrobe. Namco are keeping tight-lipped about online play, but we'll keep you posted on developments and give you a full review when the game's released in the summer. The Grand Theft Auto series success seems to have inspired LucasArts' upcoming military-themed third-person adventure. The Dogs of War in Mercenaries can hijack enemy vehicles, including tanks, and helicopters in their quest to earn cash from taking out the trash. The action takes place in a near future North Korea, where your guns for hire can explore huge plane environments on their search to bring down 52 high-ranking bad guys. Mercenaries makes use of the Havoc physics engine, which was last seen in Half-Life 2, so everything in those environments can be interacted with or violently obliterated. The usual array of heavy firepower, including rifles and missile launchers, are available. And if a situation gets too tricky, point a laser at a hardcore target and call up a bunker-busting airstrike. We can't wait to get our hands on this title in the spring, as it could be a real step forward for third-person actioners. Join us later on in the show as we continue to look at some of the big games for 2005, and we catch a glimpse of next-generation console developments. Time now to wrap up everything there is to know in gaming news. Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay put Vin Diesel's company Tygon on the gaming map. No surprise then that a Riddick sequel was in the works. A more intriguing Tygon project comes from an idea of X-Men director Brian Singer and features a secret service agent assigned to protect the president. House of the Dead was one of the worst movies ever made, and yet they're still going to make a sequel. This time, one Michael Hurst is directing. You might have heard of his previous effort, Baby Juice Express. Then again, you probably haven't. Shroke Commando plan to continue their campaign for world domination next year with new funding. Despite not doing so well in this year's WCG, the Swedish clan have attracted a major sponsorship deal with hardware manufacturers Razer. EA are already developing games for the Xbox 2. Criterion, the developers behind Burnout 3, are working on a first-person shooter named Black, and Digital Illusions are working on a new instalment in their Battlefield series called Modern Combat. Well, we've seen all the big sequels we've been waiting for this year. It's time for the rumour mill to start grinding all over again. The man in charge of Valve, Gabe Newell, has told Swedish magazine Game Reactor that Half-Life 3 is already in the works. Allegedly, this time out, the game's hero will be none other than your female sidekick, Alex. Here, let me buy you a drink. Also, the game will give further explanation of the alien's involvement in the series. And potentially good news for anyone slightly disappointed with the ending of Halo 2. The American official Xbox magazine has speculated that there will be a Halo 2.5 release to coincide with the launch of Xbox 2. The rumour has it that the game would have a reworked ending and updates on the multiplayer mode. Well, there's no harm in hoping, is there? Stay with the Master Chief. He'll know what to do. Yes, sir, Sergeant. Now here's a preview you don't see every day, a game so far from release it doesn't even have a publisher yet. In fact, you're watching the very footage created to attract one. Deadlands is a mix of Western action and classic horror, loosely based on a popular real-life RPG. We met with Scott West of Head First Productions to find out more about the game and its sombre hero. Basically, he died and he's been brought back from the dead. He's been possessed by an evil spirit and he's now seeking vengeance on the Seven Sins gang who originally killed him. We're using the lightning roughly. What we're doing is taking the level locations and the, the world, the substance and the, the, the core of it, 
And what we've done is made it more mainstream for the, the mass market appeal, to be honest. There are still role-playing elements in there, but what we've not done is made a role-playing game. We've made a, a pure action game with adventure and exploration and puzzle-solving elements in it. True to form, even this early footage is full of Wild West-inspired hideousness. If the giant demon grizzly wasn't enough of a clue, then take in the ghostly locomotives, phantom gunslingers, and look, a monstrous crow. We asked Scott about the ongoing visual development of the game. The visual style is, um, it's been something that's been concept worked quite a lot, and that the art team had a very clear vision what they wanted to do, and that was meld the two genres of Western and horror together. What we didn't want to do was create a gothic horror setting or, or just a completely Western setting, which would be, you know, too generic, really, for the type of product we've done. Could devilish Westerns be the next big thing? Will the next wave of evil cowboys be enough to send John Wayne galloping to the toilet in fear? I don't know, but if any one game can do it, Deadland stands a decent chance. Still to come on Gamer TV, we continue to gaze into our crystal ball and look at what's coming to a small screen near you. And we pay our second visit of the show to the Wild West, only this cowboy is no Clint Eastwood. Get up to speed and transform your gaming experience with Blue Yonder Broadband Internet. The Grandmaster of Gaming is back. I'm really, really angry. Dominic Diamond takes an alternative look at the world of video games. You get locked up for that. With homicidal puppets. <laughs> oh, that's got a smile, doesn't it? Shock confessions. I have some embarrassing itching, and it hurts when I pee. And Caroline Flack. <laughs> it's like no gaming show you've ever seen before. More to do the fact there's tons of ladies with virtually nothing on. Wayne Games Attack. Tonight's attacks exclusively on Bravo. Have you been injured, had an accident at work, or on the road, or in a public place? Unsure if you have a claim for compensation, concerned about hidden charges? Now, there is no need to worry. The Personal Injury Helpline will handle your claim with no charges, and nothing taken from the money you're awarded. So, for a risk-free quality service, call us free now on 0800 085 1715. If you don't make the call, you'll never know. Regency found me an affordable way to buy my council house without the hassle. They searched for the right mortgage to suit your situation. Regency took the worry and the hassle away from buying my council house. We knew we had the right to buy the council house, but until we spoke to Regency, we weren't that 100% sure. The service was exceptional. From the moment I phoned them up and the mortgage process started, the customer services were absolutely second to none. All the things I was worried about, Regency sorted it out for us. Now it's mine, I can make plans for the future. It's yours to do with what you want to do. They're very straight down the line with the whole mortgage process. And I would recommend them to anybody who was going to buy a council house. This is my house. <laughs> Where can you find a car insurer who'll not only protect your maximum no-claim discount, but also keep it protected for life? Simple. Call More Than Now on 0800 300 202. Your premium will never go up just because you've made a claim. And with our comprehensive cover, we'll even give you a free courtesy car while yours is being fixed. You could save up to 40% when you switch. So for car insurance, don't accept less than More Than. Call now on 0800 300 202. Do you see red everywhere you look? Maybe your monthly outgoings are too high, or you need to raise extra cash. Perhaps you need a holiday, or you might want to extend or improve your home. But because of CCJs, mortgage arrears, or a bad credit history, all you see is red. Well, relax and think blue with Pacific Home Loans. We could organize a loan of up to £100,000 to help consolidate your debts, or afford that special purchase with repayment terms of up to 25 years. So if you're a homeowner, whatever your circumstances, call Pacific Home Loans free on 08000 433 400 or apply online and see what can come out of the blue. There's something big happening at Yes Car Credit. Because not only can you get a reliable car on credit, whatever your credit history, we're also holding our first ever sale. Right now, you could save up to a massive £1,000 on your new car. That's right, £1,000. You can choose from a wide range of popular makes and models, 
Each car comes with a 125 point quality check, a year's AA vehicle membership and you can even drive away the very same day. But hurry, our January sale ends this Sunday. Call now on 08000 to arrange a visit to your local showroom, apply online or see us in yellow pages and get ready to save up to £1,000 on your new car. <laughs> Groundbreaking technology in Gadgets, 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 tonight at 8.30 on Bravo. Get up to speed and transform your gaming experience with Blue Yonder Broadband Internet. Welcome back to Gamer TV. It's off to Oddworld now to meet a strange new gunslinger. Oddworld is back, but not exactly as we know it. If the cutscenes and gameplay in this preview version are anything to go by, though, Xbox owners are in for a tasty treat when it's released. Unfortunately, the PS2 version has been canned. The weird inhabitants of Oddworld remain, as does its quirky humour. But our old heroes, Munch and Abe, have been replaced by Clint Eastwood-style bounty hunter, known only by the name of Stranger. <laughs> Very little is revealed about Stranger at the beginning of the game, except that he badly needs a doctor. He also badly needs some work, ridding Oddworld of outlaws. Never liked guns. Oh man, why'd you have to do that? The game will be much more violent than previous Oddworld outings, but it's cute violence. The idea will be to beat up the bad guys, but not kill them. Once you've knocked them out, you simply hoover them up with a handy, um, bandit vacuum. And cash them in at the bounty store. It's mainly played from a third-person point of view, where Stranger can spin and headbutt to take enemies out. But a crucial part of the game is first-person mode, where he uses a crossbow. Instead of arrows, the increasingly suspect Stranger will fire a variety of tiny animals. The chipunk, for instance, can be used to distract enemies, causing them to run over to stop its jabbering. There's also a puke-inducing skunk bomb, and you'll even be able to snipe with a mini cannonball called a thud slug. Giving new meaning to the words live ammo, you'll actually have to hunt and capture your furry projectiles. You'll also have to regenerate your own health with some self-performed CPR. Plenty of platform and puzzle action is still planned for the game, using Stranger's high jumping abilities and his cuddly weapons to access new areas. Even at this early stage, the gameplay has bags of potential. Graphically, the settings already look impressive. And although what you see here appears limited to the old Wild West, we're promised even more locations in the finished version. Providing EA keep up the good work, we could be looking at a big hit this year. Hands, Floyd. I'm taking you in. <laughs> Not to be outdone by LucasArts mercenaries, EA are also planning to go to war with their release of Battlefield 2. Developed from scratch by the team behind Battlefield 1942, Battlefield 2 will put you in charge of some of the most modern weapons available in a near future war set in the Middle and Far East. The game will remain predominantly a multiplayer experience for up to 64 players online. Though a single player practice campaign is included too, alongside the other gameplay modes from Battlefield 1942. As usual, you start off on foot in a number of infantry roles, now including a special forces trooper who can call in precision laser guided airstrikes and a heavy infantry man with a machine gun and body armor. But, of course, you'll also be able to get into APCs, tanks and aircraft, covering ground faster and shooting the hell out of your foes in a much more satisfying way.
With brand new lush graphics, the order of the day, Battlefield 2 will also be enhanced by a new game recording mode that will allow you to review missions after you've played them. With Battlefield Modern Combat on its way for consoles alongside this PC release, it looks like you're in for an explosive year online. to our countdown of top titles to look out for in 2005. The Matrix universe returns to games in a massively multiplayer online guise in the imaginatively titled The Matrix Online. The last Matrix video game, Enter the Matrix, was as disappointing as the last two films, but this massively multiplayer title looks like it's shaping up to be a winner. The action takes place after the final movie, with bands of human rebels still battling machine dominance inside a virtual world. Before you start performing acts of death-defying waifu, a trip to the tailors is required. After all, what self-respecting child of Zion would be seen dead without shades and a nice goth trench coat? With enough time and training, you'll perfect giant leaps with a single bound, martial arts and, of course, bullet time gunplay. The final two movies stank like a bag of fish heads left in a hot car. This game may be a chance for the Matrix franchise to redeem itself when it's released early in the year. Et tu, Brute? Next up, a combination of sneaky stealth mystery and brutal gladiatorial combat that would make Russell Crowe wince. Shadow of Rome from Capcom features bloodthirsty rampages through the Colosseum with the muscle-bound Agrippa and puzzle-solving with his weedy mate, Octavianus. While Agrippa can wield an impressive number of weapons against human and animal foes, his power will have to rely on sneaking around and donning disguises to solve a murder mystery involving the Emperor. The addition of over-the-top gladiatorial combat to a stealth actioner brings a refreshing change to a genre that relies on hiding in the shadows and makes Shadow of Rome one to watch when it's released in the spring. From ancient Rome to the inner workings of a psychopath's mind in the quite frankly berserk Killer 7. First-person shooters are ten a penny at the moment, but Killer 7's combination of lush cell-shaded visuals and a story so weird it would give Marilyn Manson nightmares make it worthy of our attention. The lead character has seven different personalities, each one possessing different skills, most of which seem to revolve around wiping out hordes of bad guys. The bad guys are some form of demons hell-bent on world domination. Definitely not a title for the faint-hearted, but the weirdness factor may just be enough to keep jaded FPS fans happy. There's always time for fun. <laughs> With Sony and Nintendo having both launched new handhelds, you'd think their boffins and backroom boys would be due for a nice long holiday. But the big news in 2005 should be the announcement of all of the major manufacturers' next-generation consoles. Nintendo are playing their cards close to their chest about their new console, but we think Sony and possibly Microsoft will make announcements about their new machines at the E3 game show in May. For months, images have been circulating on the internet speculating what PS3 will look like. Sony has helpfully given us a taste of the next machine's logo, but that's about it. Rumours suggest Sony may release two different versions of the machine, one with a higher spec and price. We'll have to wait until May to confirm this speculation and to find out if PS3 will be backwards compatible. The same goes for the next generation Xbox. Speculative images are floating around the net suggesting what Xbox 2 will look like. News about its specification has been thin on the ground, but it does seem likely that Microsoft may try to trump Sony by announcing Xbox 2 sooner than we think. When bankruptcy recently made a claim hang up their well-used gloves, the future of their modified car racer Juiced also looked bleak. But thankfully, like a knight in a shining Evo 8, THQ have come to the rescue. 
Thanks to them snapping up the rights, Juiced will now make it onto our consoles and PCs in time for some summertime street racing. Hey, nice driving there. Juiced's take on the car modern phenomenon is refreshing. Going for a simulation-like handling style will bring this game closer to Gran Turismo realism than other, more arcade-focused titles. Uh, I think the fact that we've got this kind of simulation feel to the physics in this sort of street modding scene is fairly new. Most of the, the products that have come out in this area have got much more of an arcadey feel, much more of a sort of facile treatment of the subject matter as well. So we treat the subject matter very seriously. Um, it's very serious to the people who do it. You know, they, they, uh, that's, their, that's what they do, they live for it. Uh, that's what they work for, they, they earn the cash to spend on the cars. So, you know, the game reflects that. Even with lifelike handling, for Juice to succeed, it will also need a traffic jam of hard-tuned cars and a bigger range of cosmetic modifications than the Jackson family. One area that the game has got really huge scope is in the uh, in cars. You know, there's, there's 49 individual car models in the game, which is quite a large number to start with, but each of those can be modded both visually and also in terms of performance. So, um, you know, there's a staggering number of combinations. You're talking about about seven point, I think it went out about 7.2 trillion combinations um, because you can change the bumpers on the cars, you can change the spoilers. We've even got, uh, you know, complex paint, to, paint jobs on the cars as well, things like pearlescent paint effects and um, special specular paints and stuff so that you get real multicolored layers on the, on the car painting. <laughs> EA's top-selling Need for Speed underground games might seem to have the market sewn up at the moment, but for our money, Juiced has enough nitrous in its tanks to overtake it, despite the false start. Well, that's about all we have time for in our special look ahead. What with new consoles in the handheld and home markets and top titles in the works for the current generation of consoles, 2005 looks set to be a very big year for games indeed. And you'll see them all on Gamer TV. Catch you next time. to speed and transform your gaming experience with Blue Yonder Broadband Internet. There's nothing like DIY to bring people closer together. <laughs> and this... <laughs> it's nothing like DIY. Watch Quentin Wilson tackle heavy loads. Go! Two cents! Feet! Drips. You we have therefore saved your life. Oh, and some serious bonding. Britain's worst DIYer starts January the 24th on Bravo. I'm going. In Daredevil, she fought to the death. Now she's back to face the ones who betrayed her. Electra at Cinemas January 21st. Cyprus. Welcome to the island for all seasons. They can get called cheeky, naughty, but never dull. Even the ones over six foot are still growing. They're better than any anti-aging cream. They tend to think what they think not what they're supposed to. They ask the questions no one else thought of. Work with the most exciting people in the world. Use your head, teach. Spend your time wisely this weekend. It's all over, it's all over. Bravo's Weekends of Sport. Weekends from 10 a.m. only on Bravo. This is the Bravo opening in half an hour. Beware, the invisible Goliath scary truck returns in a continuation of yesterday's story. Knight Rider at six. The following broadcast is an alternative video game program. Viewers should prepare themselves for games related jokes, nonsense and general hijinks. <laughs> Oh!
from the alternative world of video games today, a Vegas video game poet, FIFA versus Pro Evolution, the making of an oddball classic, and Lucy Pinder takes the dance challenge. Hi, viewers. I love shopping. Retail therapy, that's what they call it, and I love that too. Therapy, I mean. I mean, how fantastic that it doesn't matter whether you're suffering from codependency, anger management, or bedwetting, you can pay a complete stranger a fortune to tell you it's all your mum's fault. Brilliant. And so is this letter which I received from Mr R Crusoe from Lincolnshire. It says, Dear Dominic, if you could only take one game onto a desert island, what one would it be? I have a really bad feeling I'm going to end up shipwrecked soon and want to pack accordingly. Well, this is a silly question, Mr Crusoe. There is no electricity on a desert island. But I think you'll find that trying to catch fish with a sharp stick, eating berries without knowing whether they'll kill you or not, and avoiding the clutches of cannibals will be more exciting than any game. Anyway, cheating is something I can never condone, except when used by the Inland Revenue. But I know there are games animals out there who can't play without cheating. So for the benefit of them, here's our top five best games cheats ever. Daytona Racing. The prospect of playing this arcade classic at home was one of the main things that persuaded people to buy a Saturn, a decision they'd live to regret. Daytona in the arcade was such a moderate fun, it's little wonder the console version couldn't match it. But surely they could have done better than this blocky pish nightmare. There was one ray of light though. Holding down a few buttons meant you could transform your vehicle into a horse and go charging around the track like a four-legged racing banshee. Once you've done this a few times, though, feel free to use the game as a coaster. You've had as much amusement with it as you're ever going to get. At number four, arcade-style baseball sim, MLB Slugfest. Now, this is a game where, as far as cheats are concerned, the principle of more equals better has been rigorously applied. A bewildering number of secret codes unlock an avalanche of hidden options from dwarf team to clowns, horses, even dolphins. Bats can be changed into logs, maces and even ice, while the stadium can be transported to all sorts of exotic places. No doubt about it, MLB Slugfest has a higher concentration of cheats than the Italian football squad. And we'll bring you more of our top five cheats later in the show. <laughs> Balloons. <laughs> anyway, there's a shopping theory that says you get what you pay for. Well, that's not true. A couple of months ago, I paid 75,000 baht over the internet for Kelly Sue, and I'm still waiting for her to come over here and be my bride. <laughs> Here's some more facts coming at you from today's Behind the Games. A wise man once told me to be wary of camels. He said never trust anybody who can go a whole week without a drink. But in 1984, camels became the unlikely heroes of a top-selling video game for the Commodore. And no ordinary camels either. These ones were mutant and bent on revenge. Revenge of the Mutant Camels is a scrolling shooter game for the Commodore 64 where you, as a camel, have to attack 42 levels of bizarrely shaped enemies. The reason I chose camels is simply because I've always been fond of camels ever since I was in school. I, for some reason I just have a strange attraction for these strange, odd-looking creatures. We had Attack of the Mutant Camels first, in which the camels were the enemy and you flew a spacecraft attacking them. But I rather like camels and I felt sorry for them being attacked, so I changed the story so the camels became the heroes and rose up against their oppressors. To produce Revenge of the Mutant Camels took about two months and basically most of that time was just me sat down with lots of cups of tea in front of my computer. Uh, you'd start out by just designing a few sprites or get that going in, then get the bullets in, then just sit down and bang out attack waves. Uh, that probably took about six weeks of the process, then the final process is getting the tape duplicated, and getting the cover artwork made, that took another couple of weeks on the end, and two months start to finish, and there's a finished game. How did the game change my life? I guess it changed it in a very positive way, because it, 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 it got me quite well known in the Commodore scene, and set up Llamasoft to be well known for a few years afterwards. 
Looking back now, I, I feel very happy about the game. A lot of people enjoyed it, and I'm, I'm still remembered for that game probably more than for any of my other games, really. We never made that much money from it. Llamasoft was never rich in the way that some other software houses were rich, but it, it gave us a good living for a few years. through tabloids and men's lifestyle mags in search of the hottest ladies to stage our very own Top Totty dance-off. Marsh, Pinder, Pearson, Hicks and Downs. Held over the series, five gorgeous girls battle it out to see who has the moves to match their curves. I look at the dance challenge table shows Kaylee Pearson still comfortably in the lead with, oh, nearly two million points. Her nearest rival, Katie Downs, is nearly, oh, 1.7 million behind. My jib is at the low, uh, because it's the very last of our special dance challenges. This is the last time I get to wear the shirt and the medallions and sit on Dominic's big couch of love with a phenomenally attractive woman. But the good news is, this time, it is luscious, lovable Lucy Pinder. I've always thought it's a great name because you can do that luscious, luscious. lovable Lucy Or juicy. Pinder. Juicy Lucy. It's not going there. <laughs> um, and, uh, I, rem I remember uh, when you first appeared uh, in the star, just let's, let's tell the tale of how you were discovered. Um, I was discovered on Bournemouth Beach last August, about a year ago. Yeah. Uh, and then... What were you doing, just...? Just sunbathing, yeah. you know, uh, with top on. Uh, and then the Daily Stare? Stare? The Daily, Daily Stare? That's the one. Daily That's Star picked me up. That's the more upper, mobile version <laughs> of it. <laughs> Daily Star uh, yeah. picked me up and offered me a contract. Yeah, it did. And I, in fact, uh, you know, funny enough, a very similar situation to you. I was also discovered some bin on Bournemouth Beach. Uh, I was harpooned by a Japanese trawler, though, unfortunately. Um, and, uh, and you've had a fantastic year since yeah, then? Yeah, yeah, good year. You're right up in the kind of, you're right up in the Champions League now. Am I? Modest, well, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping to draw you away, home, <laughs> anywhere, really. Um, when it comes to dancing on this game, physically, I would say some of your attributes that have helped your career might hinder you in this today. I think you might be right. Yeah. I, think, I think I've got... How are you going to cope with I've those I've got a problems? holding technique. Oh, have you? Yes. OK. I'm going to adopt the, uh, yeah. Do you need any help at all? Do you need an extra hand? I think hand? If, if I do, I'll give you a shout. Please do. I can do the Heimlich manoeuvre. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and lots of other ones. Um, well, you know, we are facing a possible disaster of mammoth proportions <laughs> to see how Lucy does join us later in the show. Before we do that, there's time to marvel at the three and two spots in our top five gaming cheats. Number three, it's Tomb Raider 2. Now, this cheat caused a level of interest and excitement that's mm, pretty difficult to understand now, and we're not talking about that mythical nudity cheat. Oh, no. This one involved fiddling about with a special joypad combination, and by doing so, idle players with far too much time on their hands could amuse themselves for a few seconds by watching Miss Lara Croft explode. People would do this again and again and again. There wasn't really much point to it. But then, as many innocent young gamers were later to discover, there's no real point to being alive either. I know. I've read Sartre. And Camus. Virtual Rally 3 is another game that tries manfully to keep the cheats tradition alive. Entering various developers' nicknames as the player will transform your vehicle into a hovercraft, a mini, or a squishy version of itself. It's like getting all the effects from taking drugs without doing the illegal bit. Best of all, though, is the helium voice cheat, which makes it sound like David Beckham is doing the commentary. I will have the best cheat ever in part two. Dominic Diamond is back. I have some embarrassing itching, and it hurts when I pee. When games attack, tonight at 8, exclusively on Bravo. You'll be amazed at what you can now pick up at Pizza Hut. There's a delicious new range of pastas and salads. 
and they're only four ninety nine for a limited period. Tell us your dreams, King. I dream of uh, one day producing a yummy, cudgy tea time with Central, to be honest with you. Crumpets from King's Mill. Yeah, they're good. Had an accident that wasn't your fault or suffer from negligence within the last three years and contact the Personal Injury Care Line. We take the worry out of making a claim. Win or lose, you will incur no costs and will receive 100% of your compensation. Even the phone call is free. Good morning, Personal Injury Care Line. How can I help you? For free, confidential advice, call the Personal Injury Care Line on free phone 0800 655 677 and let us start caring for you. Regency found me an affordable way to buy my council house without the hassle. They searched for the right mortgage to suit your situation. Regency took the worry and the hassle away from buying my council house. We knew we had the right to buy the council house, but until we spoke to Regency, we weren't that 100% sure. The service was exceptional. From the moment I phoned them up and the mortgage process started, the customer services were absolutely second to none. All the things I was worried about, Regency sorted it out for us. Now it's mine, I can make plans for the future. It's yours to do with what you want to do. They're very straight down the line with the whole mortgage process. And I would recommend them to anybody who was going to buy a council house. This is my house. <laughs> Looking for a company which arranges mortgages, listens to you and understands what you want, offers a choice of mortgages and remortgages, provides great customer service and more? Well, if you're a homeowner, call Purple Loans Free on 0800 499 499. They promise to act fast and aim to get you a great deal. So unlock the capital in your home and add colour to your life. Whether it's that dream holiday you've been promising yourself, improving your home with a fantastic new kitchen, or a brand new car, call Purple Loans now on 0800 499 499. This is our Heart Shake Heartbreak, the new album from the Kings of Leon. Out now. Coming up in the alternative video game show, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with a tortured poet, the showdown you've been waiting for, FIFA versus Pro Evo, and the best gaming cheat ever. But first, the four best words we've ever had on the show, Lucy, Pinder, Dance, Challenge. Here's Steve. Thanks, Dominic, and it's another special occasion for all you dance enthusiasts out there. Lucy Pinder. Another girl adopting a barefooted technique. I couldn't convince her to take anything else off. Although, believe you me, viewers, I tried. She's on there at the moment. Just look at the concentration. She knows it's harder than it looks. She's got two big obstacles in her way. Rhythm and technique. If she can overcome those, the world is indeed her oyster. But she's sort of just hovering about at the moment. I wouldn't really call it dancing as such. Uh, I don't know whether or not she's using some Jedi power or indeed whether she's following the instructions on the screen. I'd advise her to follow the instructions on the screen. But it's too late. Oh Lucy, Lucy, uh, how, do you, how do you think you did there? I think I may have taken the bottom slot. Yeah. I think you I was, might have I was too. trying. Oh, you were, you're yeah. a trier? You yeah. Were, you were trying you like a beer. You've got to be first or last. Yeah, that's true. You Everyone don't be... forgets the middle. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're like the Eddie the Eagle yeah, of dance exactly, stage. Yeah, exactly. exactly. What? Where is he now? <laughs> <laughs> He's busy sunbathing on Bournemouth Beach trying to get noticed by the star. Over here, you know, he can't. So what were some of the problems that you faced there? Uh, just too many arrows. But the one thing I do have to say, one thing you've taught me is that obviously, you know, you had to control certain parts of you there. And I now know if there is such a thing as reincarnation, I want to come back as one of Lucy Pinder's hands. That would just be, <laughs> that would do me. All right, forget about Nirvana. I'll just, just go the for hands. the hands. 
So, a look at the final table reveals. Lucy Pinder is indeed at the bottom, 26,835. But the winner, with a mammoth 1,952,105 points, count them all, Kayleigh Pearson. <laughs> Kelly, obviously you've you've won in the past FHM High Street Honeys, and now you've won this though. Uh, it's how does this feel? Amazing. Yeah, how do you feel inside? I feel absolutely brilliant. Does it? Yeah. I'm so pleased for you. Um, I would like to then formally uh, award you with our ginormous When Games Attack Dancing Challenge trophy. Oh, thank you. And uh, it may not look like a big thing, but a little extra present oh, in there for you. Like thank to fish you. It out. Can you hold that for I me? I certainly can. Just a little, a little what bonus. Oh, yeah. My phone number. You, you might need it. Never know. So you're kicking yourselves now, girls, <laughs> aren't you? Let's face it. All for me. But you know, you can share it. Do you know what I mean? Because we, you've all done equally well. Uh, okay, that's it for the dance challenge. Uh, let's go get some milk and cookies. Well, viewers, it's that time again. Another head-to-head. -head. Two more games put to the sword by me and Queenie and... Ka and sorry, sorry, sorry. What's with the keys? You've joined a swingers club. Ah, What? An all-female swingers club. Ah. Go and get your boxes. Today, we've got a fantastic head-to-head -head for you. Cuddly is opting for Pro Evolution Soccer 4. That means Queenie's got to be going for FIFA 2005. It's the battle all fans want to see because they want to know just exactly how much better is Pro Evo 4. Round 1. <coughs> Graphics. A great Take effort, a look at the players' faces in FIFA Football 2005. The resemblance between the real-life players and their virtual counterparts is at times astonishing. Equally, Pro Evolution Soccer 4 has received much praise for its fluid player animation. Every skillful trick, powerful shot and swift moment of ball control is the result of the very best in motion capturing. But which game has the better visuals? Fifty-four percent of the hundred gamers we surveyed said Pro Evolution 4 had the better graphics. Round one to Pro Evolution. Two rounds to go. One nil to Cuddly and Pro Evo 4. I have to say, Quinny, if there was any category you were going to win, I thought it might have been that one. I think you're in trouble here. Round two, gameplay. Gameplay-wise, FIFA Football 2005 gives fans no reason to complain. The series has been constantly improved over the years and the new first touch control system gives players a new level of skill and flair on the ball. On the other hand, many believe Pro Evolution Soccer 4's ultra-responsive controls and intense atmosphere make it as close as you can get to being a professional superstar in the beautiful game. But what do you think? Seventy-five percent of those surveyed said Pro Evolution's gameplay was superior to FIFA's. Round two to Pro Evolution. One more round to go. So it comes as no surprise Pro Evo 4 has already won this particular head-to-head -head for Cuddly. But Queenie, don't despair. There's one category left. You might win that. If it's marketing spend. Or it's not. It's lifespan. With a comprehensive offering of licensed clubs and players, FIFA Football 2005 demands to be played until its they next annual score. incarnation. Most addictive of all is the time-consuming management mode, where you can coach your oh, team really from good. lower it's leagues to cup good. glory. Pro Evolution Soccer 4 has oh, fewer options, but its simplicity oh, is also its beauty. Pro 4 is a no-nonsense football game, and through all its versions, you've never heard the words major overhaul once. There hasn't been a need for one, and that's why fans continue to pick up the pad. But which of them keeps you playing more? Fifty-two percent of our survey said Pro Evolution had the longer lifespan. 
Pro Evolution takes the final round. At three rounds to nil, Pro Evolution Soccer 4 is the undisputed winner. Yes! Do you know, Queenie, I almost feel sorry for you. There is no way FIFA 2005 was ever going to top out a mighty Pro Evo. And because of your stupidity, it's a whopping forfeit for you this time. Let's have you, Cuddly. Oh yeah, we're not mucking around today. Let her have it. And let's have no more silliness again from you. Join us next time for another Head to Head. Time now to put you out of your misery by revealing the number one spot in our list of memorable cheats. Here's the four we've had so far. At five, horsing about in Daytona Racing. In four, MLB Slugfest with its legions of bizarre teams. At three, Lara explodes like so many of our young fans. At number two, cheap but effective voice fun in B Rally 3. But our number one gaming cheat ever is... Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2. Now, any cheat that lets you play as a TIE fighter gets our vote, but Rogue Squadron offers much more than that, with three bonus missions, upgrades, and vehicles ranging from the Imperial Shuttle to Slave 1. But the best cheat lets you jump behind the wheel of a 1950s Cadillac and fly around the galaxy like an interstellar James Dean without the horrible crash. It's freedom on a grand scale. It's a bracing ride, but most importantly, kids, it teaches you if you want the good things in life, it's best to cheat. Captain, the Star Destroyer. It's crashing into the planet. Oh, that was lucky. Last one in the shop. Hang on, £3.35 for a lousy gag. <laughs> Extortionate. America, land of the brave, home of the free, and a place where even one single supersized portion of a fast meal can render you incapable of movement for up to a week. But there are stories to be told over there, and we need to tell them. Here's this week's feature. Poets are inspired by many different things. For Milton, it was the eternal struggle between heaven and hell. For someone like uh, Eliot, say, it was the spiritual crisis at the heart of man. For Seth Barkin, it's a yellow mouth eating dots while being chased by ghosts. Pac-Man, the terror I experienced during my tactical flight is very real. As real as any nameless creeping horror derived from any supernatural stalking presence waiting to seize me from the darkness at my back while walking down a black alleyway. They are coming for me. They are coming for me. And I am powerless to stop them. Seth Barkin is a poet and author who was born and still lives in Las Vegas, a city that has a good claim to be the most bizarre place on the planet. Seth's book of poetry about video games, titled Blue Wizard is About to Die, was published earlier this year and has proved something of a hit. For me, Barkin's verse captures the essence of the gaming experience in a surprisingly effective way. Seth, Dominic Diamond, how you doing? Great. Cool, nice to meet you, nice you. For, the, for the very first time. Upon entering the house, my initial feeling was one of trepidation. Could Seth's mind be as chaotic as his living room? <laughs> Time for me to put on my intellectual pants. Seth Barkin, I'm intrigued that you have chosen as the, as the starting point of this, this poetic odyssey the video game. Why? My approach to poetry is to try to universalise uh, any experience, any common experience, you know, so like whether that's, you know, drinking in a bar, seeing a pretty girl, uh, a car accident, uh, whatever. And I thought, what, what could be a more universal subject matter than video games? So, so in, in effect, uh, what you're saying is that the, a, a car crash involving 20 nuns has the same emotional validity as Mario jumping on a Koopa Trooper. <laughs> you could put it that way, yeah. Mario, king of plumbers, cartoon hands, white gloves, a psychotic jumping thing. He is a symbol of control to you. Yeah, and you know, uh, he uses those around him uh, 
with reckless abandon. You know, people are objects to, to him. Commander of the psychotic and useless power of Yoshi, a creature so dumb and pointless that only you, my little mustachioid Italian freak, would dare punch it in the back of the head. Is it to say, ready the tongue, prepare to fire. Having spent the day with him, it's clear that Seth's success is no fluke. He is a poet of real talent who's just happened to turn a sharp and original eye onto video games. Things are exploding into lines of red and orange starbursts, little pixel fireworks. Even though I'm sure this means something bad, like maybe each little pop is a human I should have tried to save, I can't help but think that it's pretty. Do you see Defender as, as a metaphor for your life? Actually, yeah. I, 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 you could, you could go there. Um, Do you rescue humanoids? N no, usually I, I enjoy watching them die. Despite my cluelessness, I keep playing feeding quarters into the machine just to watch the pretty colors. Is Vegas the quintessential video game? I could actually agree with that. Um, I, you, I, would you say it was profound, what, what I said? I, it borders on it, yeah. Thank uh, you. Possibly. We're going to make millions doing this. You and me, kid. Millions. What lies on the horizon then for Seth Barkin, poet? The, the next book, it, it looks like, is going to be uh, poems that are almost exclusively about uh, bars in Vegas. Because that's what I, I've been doing lately. I, you know, well, it's what I've always done. Old hand, old hand. Seth Barkin, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure, thank you. You probably wouldn't want to swap lives with him, but Seth is a true original, and these days, that's a rare commodity. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm doing it very fast. And that's it. For another When Games Attack, I'm off to a clothes shop to see if I can last longer than 10 seconds without some lovely assistant coming up and saying, do you need any help, sir, as if I'm a complete mindless moron? Goodbye.